Hello, students. Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here. Hope you guys are having a good evening or day. Uh, today we're going to be working on the E string and uh, giving you guys some tips regarding playing low twos. So the biggest thing that uh, you guys should understand is when you're playing on the thinnest string, which is the E string, it's important to have really good technique. A lot of times I like to teach the E string last because it's definitely the one that is prone to the most bad habits. So even if you guys have already been playing on the E string for a while, uh, there's definitely some things you might want to consider that you could easily be doing incorrect. So I kind of want to start off by uh, talking about the right hand and the bow stroke re related to the E, and then we'll talk about the left hand. So regarding the right side, the right hand, the right elbow, uh, what most students do is they use too much shoulder when playing on the E string, and uh, that can cause a bow bounce or just a bad sound in general. So what you need to do is when you're playing on the, on the thinnest string, the E string, make sure that your elbow is right at your side on the E, whereas on the A, it, was, it should be in between the instrument and your side, and on the D, it should be even with the instrument. So make sure you're being very precise with your elbow changes as you're playing on different strings, and then especially try to make sure that you're getting down low enough for the E string, which is uh, very common. Students don't get down low enough, and like I said, they use too much shoulder. So to warm up, let's go ahead and just kind of start by playing open E, and let's, let's practice getting to the tip. Let's make sure we're bending our wrist as we're coming up bow. It's really common for students to keep their wrist locked, so they're using too much shoulder and too much arm. So we want to basically practice extending and bending, extending and bending, while our elbow is right at our side. So let's go ahead and just warm up by doing that. Maybe let's do um, eight or so strokes. So it would be incorrect if I was doing this. You're going to get more of that sound, kind of crunchier sound. Not as pleasant. So by having your elbow at our side and bending our wrist, we're restricting tension up against the bow, which is the main bad habit for people that play on the E string. Raise your hand if that makes sense. All right. Awesome. Okay, so um, the next thing I want to mention with the E string, which is really, really common, is a lot of students, what they do is they don't have their knuckles high enough when playing on the E string. So what I want to make sure you guys do is take the left hand of putting fingers down into four steps. Step one is the thumb. Make sure it's even with your first finger placement. Step two, make sure that the hand is back when you're about to place notes. A lot of students have it even with a thumb, which is incorrect. You want the hand to be behind the thumb. Step three, make sure that the hand is high, which is a very bad habit. People are too low when they play on the E string. And then turn the hand, and then just let your fingers fall. If you do that properly, basically you're going to get it to where your fingers are squeezed back. I call it making mountains with the fingers. But it's a lot more comfortable to have your fingers more apart and to have more of yourself away from the fingerboard when playing on the E string instead of being closer to the fingerboard. So for those of you guys that are here right now, you can see the difference between this, me being far away from the fingerboard with flat fingers, or me being closer and up above the fingerboard on the E string. And like I said, it's hardest to do that on the E uh, because the fingers are more squeezed back. Uh, the one that's relatively challenging is the first finger. It's really easy to dip down for that one and maybe come back, but Technically, the one should look like this when you're playing. It should be very squeezed back, very tucked. When you're playing, it shouldn't be out like this. It's very common for students to have it out instead of having it squeezed. So what you should see when you're playing the violin is you should see the racks of knuckles and not see them flat. It's really important. Okay, so when you're playing in the key of G or D, you're going to have to put your second finger right next to your one on the E string. So here's your first finger intonation. The second finger should be right next to it on the E string. So this is the finger spacing, one and two. 
and then you're going to have a third finger away from the two. So it's going to be like that. So maybe go ahead and just pick up your instruments and try to do those three notes. Like that. And while you're doing that, try to make sure that you're keeping the knuckles high and not dipping down. It might feel uncomfortable for some of you that have been uh, gotten into, the, into that habit. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and try uh, number 23, which is going to cover uh, playing on the E string. We're going to have some eighth notes. We're going to have some bow lifts. And the key is going to just be to get a smooth sound, making sure that our elbow is at our side on the E and that we, we're getting our knuckles up high. We will start a bow. Okay, and you guys probably noticed that I did not take the repeats or take the first or take the first ending. I took the second ending just to kind of make it a little bit shorter. But technically, the way that the piece is um, laid out, I'll just take my marker here so you guys make sure you understand. Um, you normally are going to take the first repeat, so you're going to go back to the beginning. Actually, sorry, it'll be right here. So you want to play this note. Start back here for the repeat, and then you're going to take another repeat back to here. And then you could take the first ending back to here, and then the second ending. So this piece actually can be a lot longer than what I just played it. Okay, so um, the biggest things there is making sure that your second finger low is in tune. I find quite often that that is out of tune with students. So let me just circle where those are at. And what I would suggest is that you guys use a metronome to match up the, the notes with the tuner. So on your, metr on your tuner metronome, this should show up as a G. But very likely, you might be a little bit off tune there because what happens sometimes is students tend to reach for notes instead of actually just letting fingers fall. So if you let your fingers reach for the second finger, you guys that are here can see this, you're going to end up turning the hand like this and you're going to be out of position for like the three or back to the one just because your second finger was placed like this. So instead, you got to keep the hand back and place the two like that so that your three can still get far enough and the four and so on. So make sure that you guys are hitting the twos in tune. And then also another one that can easily get your hand off track is any, any fourth fingers. So I would... Any ones I'm circling, I would say try to match those up. Um, I would say E3 is also very commonly missed, a little bit out of tune, uh, based on bad finger angles. So try to pay attention to those notes. Um, sometimes students, if their hand is too low, they might be out of tune with the 1 on the E. Make sure that your knuckles are up high for those. Any E1s? So, yeah, I would suggest using a tuner and just really trying to make sure that you're in tune for, for these notes. And uh, really the beginning is actually the hardest to get a clean sound because of all the string crossings. So what I suggest is that you guys work on getting a nice elbow change. You guys can do what's called the rocking bow drill to get kind of get warmed up, which is basically where you take your bow, set it on the strings, go up and down from your E string elbow to your G, and try not to make a sound. Try to... Be as quiet as possible rocking across the strings with your bow. If you're getting more of this sound, then you know that your, um, your bow grip's too tense, and then you're going to have trouble getting a clean sound for that beginning. So you're probably going to get more of at the beginning. That, which we don't want. But if you actually uh, cross strings properly and not grab the bow too tight, you're going to get a cleaner sound like this.
like that. And that's just based on how you're holding the bow and how you're um, crossing strings with your arm and not um, forcing a crossover. Raise your hand if that makes sense. All right. Okay, let's go down to the next song, Good King Wensless. This would be a great one to learn around the holiday, kind of a Christmas tune. Okay, I'll go through this one together with you guys, and uh, feel free to play along. Ready, go. Awesome. So at the end there, that's actually a really good um, exercise to actually try to keep your finger three down. So when I when I do this, this is common in music that indicates a third finger down indicator. So as I place this three, leave it down because you're coming right back to it here. There's no need to lift it up. But I see a lot of students actually do that when they play violin. They tend to lift fingers up when they don't need to. It actually causes them to have to put more effort in to find notes. Um, anytime you have to find an extra or put down extra effort, you're more likely going to be out of tune. So if you can leave fingers down as much as possible, uh, I would consider that being efficient. And um, obviously you're going to have a lot better chance of playing faster and in tune. So right there, I would suggest that. But I think it would be very difficult or very easy for people to, to dip down too low at the end here, where their three and their two are kind of ending up where your knuckles are very low and away from the fingerboard. So try to do that while leaving your knuckles up. So let's just go ahead and do those last couple measures and see if you guys can do that. So I'm going to play the D, G to G, to D, sorry, with my knuckles up high. Like that. So if you guys can do that while keeping the fingers up high, um, that's you're in really good shape. So obviously you have to make sure that the third finger does not hit the E string, otherwise you're going to get a really nasty sound. So what you could actually do is aim the third finger more towards the D string, so you can avoid that. And that's pretty common in playing different pieces when you're eventually going to learn uh, what's called double stops. You have to aim the fingers a little bit more on one side of the string or the other based on keeping fingers down or playing two notes at the same time. All right, so uh, that's a really good one. I would suggest using lots of bow for uh, most of this. There's a lot of spots where um, it's easy to stop the bow. So, for example, as I'm playing, let's, let's just take um, line two. I want you guys to play that without actually stopping your bow. I would find a lot of students do this. A lot of stopping of the bow, but what we should do is keep it always moving and transitioning the bow with the index and the wrist. Think of it kind of like a record player or a CD player. It's always moving at some sort of speed. It's not stopping. It's always moving. So it's kind of the same idea. We want to keep this wrist index moving like this. So watch how my bow doesn't stop. It stops for the rest. <laughs> So it's, it's kind of moving at a constant speed, not slowing down at all. Uh, that's tough to do, but it takes having not as tight of a bow grip and having a really flexible wrist, and then your index is what's guiding the stroke. Raise your hand if that somewhat makes sense. Easier said than done, right? All right. Cool. All right, so uh, I would suggest working on these two pieces this week. I think that would be really good. And next week we'll work on um, the long ties, which is going to be a good practice of bow sustainment. If 
you guys have any questions, feel free to email me at michael at superiorviolins.com. Um, at this time, I'm actually going to hang out with the people that came to the live class and answer any questions they might have. Uh, it's kind of an encouragement for you guys out there that um, have been only watching the audio recordings. Um, if you come to the live class, you'll be able to see me and, and ask questions and hang out. Um, and that's done every week. Uh, this class runs every Monday um, evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks so much for watching and um, hope to see you guys in a future class.